Congratulations, you just installed your new WordPress site and it's like getting the keys to your brand new digital home. Yeah, but before you start decorating and inviting guests, there are a few important things you'll want to do to make sure your website is secure, functional and ready to wow the world. Now, in this video, I'll walk you through the first 12 steps you have to pay attention. But don't worry, if you're not a tech wizard, I'll break everything down into simple, easy to follow instructions. So, let's dive in. First thing after logging into your site, go to the users, take a look at the users, especially if you're using some automatic installation solution. For example, web hosts offer this and you'll see that there is a user called admin, which is one of the best ways to hack your site. So be sure to add a new user by clicking add new user, name, email, a strong password, set your role to the administrator, add new user, log out, log back in, Go to users and delete the default user. Attribute all the content to yourself, confirm the list and done. Next thing is go to the settings and general. And if you see that your WordPress address is not HTTPS, then you have to change it. But pay attention that in order to do so, you have to install a SSL certificate. Usually your web hosts allow you to do that easily. If this is done, then just add a HTTPS here save changes, you will be logged out and now you're just logged back in. Now why the SSL certificate is important is because of the security. What will it do? It will add the padlock here which says to the visitors that the connection to your site is secure. So if you don't know what is the SSL certificate, ask from your hosting provider. This was the second thing to do. But before I proceed with your video, I have a small announcement to make and that is this video is brought to you by Fluent Support, which is a powerhouse for anyone looking to enhance their customer support. It's a budget-friendly option that integrates seamlessly with Slack, letting you manage and answer tickets without leaving your favorite chat app. Well, this feature alone is a massive efficiency boost. This AI-powered help desk can really make your life easier by handling customer inquiries efficiently. It quickly summarizes issues and drafts responses, helping you provide faster and more personalized service without the hassle of manual ticket handling. Plus, it analyzes customer sentiment to tailor interactions, ensuring your customers feel valued. During busy times, it manages high volumes of inquiries, reducing backlogs and cutting costs. This way, you can focus on more complex tasks and enjoy a perfect blend of human touch and technology for a great customer experience. You can tweak and customize it to fit your needs perfectly, especially if you prefer a self-hosted solution that lets you add your own code. Plus, it works wonders with WooCommerce and other WordPress functions, keeping your workflow smooth and efficient. So, if you're tired of those costly software-as-a-service solutions and want a reliable, powerful plugin, then Fluent Support is definitely worth checking out. Okay. Back to the WordPress dashboard and let's talk about the third thing you need to take a look at. Third thing to do is go to the settings, general, and take a look at the site language. If you're not an English speaking person, then you can choose your own language here. Set the time zone so it's correct. Choose a date and time format and save changes. Next thing to do is go to the permalinks and choose the correct permalink structure. Sometimes it's set to plain, so the URLs look like this. Sometimes it's this, sometimes it's who knows what, but the best structure is the post name. This is the most SEO friendly structure. So save changes and done. Next thing to do is go to the pages, add new page, give it the name, for example, home or whatever it is, publish it, add a new page, call it a blog, or whatever it is, as long as you know that this page will contain all the blog posts. Now go to the settings, reading, and under the your home page displays, select a static page. For the home page, select home, and for the post page, select blog. Save it, and what will it do? It will display all your blog posts on the page called blog, and the home page is the one we just created. One more thing. If you're just developing your site, then check discourage search engines from indexing this site. 
This way you can customize your site as long as you want without search engine displaying the content. But pay attention that if your site is ready, then you need to uncheck this one here. Now when this is done, then the next thing you have to do is you have to find a good team. So go to appearance and teams, delete all irrelevant teams. You only need one. So I'm going to leave the 2025 here, but I'm going to also add a new team. There are thousands of teams you can choose from, but most of them are really limited and you can't do too much with these teams. So I'm going to suggest you a team that you can't go wrong with. And the team is called Bloxy. This one here. Install it and activate it. By the way, this team has been my go-to team for the last three years. I'm using it basically for every site. Now after the installation, you'll see that you have to also install a Bloxy companion plugin. So click here. You will be redirected to the Bloxy menu. It's on the left. And now, depending on your needs, you can create your site by yourself or open up starter sites. Select free. If you have purchased the pro version, then select all plans. But since I'm using the free version at the moment, I'm going to select free. Next, I'm going to find the template I like the most. For example, this web agent here. I'm going to click on import. Then next. I don't like Elementor, so I'm going to select Gothenburg. Next. Now you can choose whether to import the content or not. If you're importing the content, then leave the stackable and WP forms activated. Click next. Let's import all the content. But once again, you don't have to do that. In order to demonstrate how does the site look like, I'm just going to do that in this video. So it took approximately 20 seconds. Everything has been imported, which means let's take a look at the site. And there's my site. And it took me only a couple of minutes. Now, next thing I have to do, I have to customize my site. So let's go to the appearance and customize. I'm not going to go through all the settings. I'm just going to show you how simple it is to use the Bloxy team. If you need to change your logo, click here or choose header here. Select logo, upload your logo. Select menu, change the colors and fonts. The same goes with typography, colors and so on. It's a really awesome team which allows you to do all sorts of stuff even with a free version. So find a good team because most likely you have to stuck with it for a couple of years. Before I proceed with the video, don't forget to smash that like button down below here. It means a lot to me and it also helps my channel. So I would appreciate your help. Next thing you have to do after installing the WordPress is install essential plugins. So go to the plugins. And take a look at the plugins which are already installed. You'll see that this A Kismet and Hello Dolly are deactivated. Those are installed by default. You may delete them without any problems. Bloxy Companion, Stackable and WP Forms Lite were installed during the demo import. Now, how to install a plugin? Add a new plugin. Click on Add a new plugin. Search for it. Click on Install Now button and activate it. But I have to say that if you're a beginner, then there is a one big mistake that most of the beginners do. And the mistake is that you install too many plugins and this clutters your site. For example, as you see from this site, it has so many stuff going on in the dashboard. If you log in, you're so confused about all the notifications on the screen. And all this clutter comes from the plugins you have installed. And if you go to the plugins page, you'll see first security plugin second security plugin, third security plugin. Let's scroll up. What else do we see here? First contact form plugin, second contact form plugin with pro add-on, third contact form plugin. Oh God, what else? We'll see one, two, three, four, five Elementor related plugins, one, two, three slider plugins and so on. Now you may say it doesn't happen, but I assure you that it happens more than you know. And usually it happens in a way that user builds the site and thinks, oh, I need a good slider plugin. What shall I do? Well, let's go to the plugins. I'm going to add a new plugin. I'm going to search for slider. Oh, but there are so many of those. Let's test smart slider. Well, it doesn't work. Let's test another one. Well, it doesn't work. Let's test third one. Well. I'm going to use that one here. Now what happens is that 
since you activated all the plugins it means that it adds all sorts of clutter to your site the site beats is slow for example i'm currently in my local machine but if i go to the dashboard open up my performance analyzer chrome extension then i'll see that the page loads 239 requests and the loading time is 6.1 seconds what should you do in these occasions is that go to the plugins take a look at the installed plugins and deactivate and delete all the ones you don't use for example i'm gonna select all the ones i don't use then i'm gonna deactivate those now i have only 15 active plugins next i'm gonna select all the plugins i deactivated i'm gonna delete those now when i go to the dashboard open up my performance analyzer you'll see that the loading time is 1.8 seconds and there's 130 requests this is why you should keep an eye on all the plugins you install and use but at the moment let's install a plugin that i need and this is the backup plugin now this also leads to the next thing you have to do i would suggest you to create your own backups even if your hosting provides you with backups just in case create your own backups my favorite backup plugin is called wp vivid so let's search for wp vivid let's install and activate it and using it is really simple it sits up here go to the backup and restore there is a schedule enable schedule backups daily weekly fortnightly monthly or every 12 hours choose what to backup save it under the settings choose how many backups you would like to be retained under the remote storage connect your site either with google drive dropbox microsoft amazon digital ocean and so on set it up and you're done if you need to restore your site then there is a just a restore link here nothing complicated i have to say that this plugin has saved my life a couple of times especially if something happens after the plugin updates or so before i start doing anything else before i start changing the content for the site or adding content what i tend to do is i tend to schedule backups during the development days i'm gonna set it to 12 hours when the site is up then usually i tend to set it to weekly but at the moment i'm gonna set it to 12 hours if you're a beginner and you mess with your site if something crashes or something goes wrong then you can use those backups to restore your site since we're already installing plugins next plugin i suggest you to install is related to the security there are a bunch of security plugins out there so just search for security or firewall and you'll find a bunch of those i'm not going to show you how to install and set it up just test them by yourself i usually use word friends but there are other good security plugins out there now next thing we have to do is also related to the plugins so let's go to the plugins and you'll see there is a enable auto updates if you're sure what you're doing then click on enable auto updates and every time this plugin has an update it will be installed automatically i wouldn't suggest you to auto update all the plugins because it may happen that some team related or some more complex plugin can cause some issues after updates and if you don't visit your site every day then sometimes it happens that two weeks later you'll find out that your site is down and it's because of the auto update so if you're enabling auto updates then be sure what you're doing you can also auto update your teams open it up and there is a enable auto updates link here next thing i have to do i'm gonna add new pages at the moment i already imported some pages as you see it also imported a blog page i'm gonna trash it because i don't need double pages and i'm gonna trash the second home page there are three privacy policy pages i'm gonna move those also to the trash since i'm already trashing stuff i'm gonna go to the posts and i'm gonna take a look at the blog posts and i'll see that it imported some demo posts i don't need those i'm gonna move those to the trash otherwise later google will index my site with those demo posts and i don't need it now let's go to the pages and i'll see that there is a about page contact page home page and services page i need to add additional pages for example gallery i'm gonna add a gallery block i can add images to the gallery insert it and now it's here publish and done 
This way you can add all pages you need and you can customize the pages that were imported. For example, if you click here and you need to change the background image, then go to the style, open a background and replace the image. The same way, change the text and everything on these pages. Now when this is done, I have to add a gallery page to the menus. So I'm going to go to the appearance menus, select the gallery, add to the menu, drag it where it belongs, save it, refresh the page. And there you go. There's my gallery. Couple of other things I have to do before finishing. Let's imagine that now my site is ready and with help of WP Vivid, I have transferred it to the web host. I'm going to go to the settings, reading, and now I can uncheck the discourage search engines from indexing this site. Let's save it and done. Next thing, when my site is up, I'm going to go to the plugins, add new plugin, and I'm going to add a plugin called WP Optimize. So why do you need this? It allows you to optimize the images you load on your site and it also improves your site website's loading speed, which is crucial for the user experience and SEO. So let's install it and activate it. Now take a look at the WP Optimize menu on the left. Under the database, you can optimize your database tables. You can delete database tables if needed. Under the images, you can set up the optimization level. Under the cache, you can enable page caching, set the lifespan to eight, save changes, go to the preload, run it now. It will preload all the added pages and it will speed up your site. Take a look at the gzip compressions and verify it's enabled. Take a look at the static file headers and verify that it's enabled. If you want to mess with the minify, then be careful because sometimes it can mess up your site. And this leads me to the next thing you have to do after your site is installed and up. Whether you're using Minify or not, open up your site using private window. Verify that everything works, that everything loads fast. If this is done, open up your site on mobiles. Take a look whether everything works as it should. And if everything is up and running well, then there is a last thing to do. And this is optional, but sometimes needed. That is install some analytics service on your site. For example, Google Analytics. I'm using Pivik, which is a free tool. I'm going to put the link to the video, how to set up the Pivik in the video description. And why is this important? Well, understanding your website traffic is crucial. You'll see what is the visitor numbers, what is the popular content. You can analyze user behavior and so on. But as I said, this is optional. Just decide what is the best course of action for you. So to sum it up, setting up WordPress might seem overwhelming, but take it step by step. Each action you take makes your website stronger, more secure and more appealing to visitors. Remember that your website is a living, breathing entity. So update it regularly, optimize it and learn. And also don't be afraid to experiment and make changes as you grow. Now, before you go, setting up your WordPress site is one part of the task, but managing and updating it is other part. And sometimes it can be tedious. I have made a separate video how to make your life easier with a tool called Modular DS. It allows you to save hours of time every week and every month by automating some tasks. This video is on the screen right now, so be sure to take a look at it next. In the meantime, take care.